Before I do anything else, I'd like to introduce, uh, I'd like to introduce the members of the band. Charlie, this is Jerry. Uh, Ron, this is uh, so-and-so. Glad right, you meet uh, Bobby over there. You guys. So that's the band. They met each other. Uh, okay, I'll be with you in a minute. Young man on rhythm guitar, he makes records for RCA. His name is John Wilkinson. John, why don't you play something? Yeah, early morning rain. After nine years of making movies, Elvis Presley returned to the live concert stage, which would see him break attendance records and set new standards in live performance. Elvis assembled some of the very best musicians from across the United States, and in doing so, he created what would become known as the TCB Band. One of the leading band members was guitarist John Wilkinson. Together with lead guitarist James Burton, John performed with Elvis in every single live performance from July 31st, 1969 to June 26th, 1977. He was there through it all. And this is his story. I invited John over to the UK in August of 2004. While here, John agreed to speak candidly about his time with Elvis and share with us his memories of those very special years. Start off. Hello, Hello friend. It's good to see you. <laughs> it's a long time good to meet you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Can you start off by telling us about um, little Johnny Wilkinson, your, your early life? Yeah, I can. I was raised in Springfield, Missouri, which is down in the southwest corner of the state of Missouri in the U.S. Um, I was brought up by, in an upper middle class type of a family, I suppose. My father uh, was a professor of psychology at Southwest Missouri State University. My mother was a homemaker. And uh, there was music all the time in the house. We had a, I had a wonderful childhood. Uh, my folks took a big interest in all the things I did. Um, they joined in my games and my friends would go to the park and dad would build kites and they do that, they take me out. I remember when I was real little, they'd take me out and we'd go uh, swinging in the park, sit on the swings and do that kind of thing, ride the merry-go-round. I had a very uh, normal, I would say, uh, childhood, a very delightful childhood. Yeah. Pleased to say, raised <laughs> by lovely people in a very nice town. Good, good. So when you were, when you were a child, do you recall first your, your thoughts when you th first heard Elvis Presley on the radio? Or, uh, oh, sure, yeah. Well, I'd heard, um, I'd seen clips um, on the TV news when he was, uh, when he first started out, when he was on the old Louisiana Hayride. Yeah. You probably remember hearing about yeah. that. And, and because he was such a, uh, something totally different than uh, people down in my area of the nation had ever seen before, he was something. That, uh, when I saw him, and these little clips looked to me like this boy's having a lot of fun, and I bet you he's getting paid to do it too. <laughs> and down where I come from, it was mostly country music, the old country artists. They yeah. stood perfectly still, and here's this kid, you know, obviously he was moving to the music. Mm, yep. And I also remember when uh, I'd hear one of his songs on the radio, uh, "Heartbreak Hotel," or "I Was the One," um, thinking, "Gosh, that's great music. That's so much fun. I'm going to try to learn how to do that." But at about that same time. I remember also an artist by the name of Conway Twitty, uh -huh. who sounded an awful lot like Elvis at that time. Of course, he was in rock and roll before he was uh, primarily country. And I thought, that's Elvis too, I bet you. That's just a different sound. And of course, I come to find out later that it wasn't. Yeah. But yeah, to hear to hear uh, Elvis's voice and the way he sang and the kind of songs he sang, as opposed to what we were used to hearing on radio in Springfield, Missouri, was quite a quite a leap for us. Yeah, quite a leap. So, what were your parents' reaction to Elvis Presley? Well, uh, when they heard him, they thought didn't say too much about it. It was when they saw him. Right. That, now you have to understand, my mom and dad, bless their hearts, are very conservative Midwest people. 
Um, and when they saw Elvis on TV, they were not excited. They didn't think probably, and I was all excited about seeing this guy. They didn't think probably that uh, Elvis was a very good role model for a youngster my age growing up. Surely I could go for somebody like Perry Como better, you know, <laughs> or Pat Boone. Um, that's not a nervous tick, that was a B, yeah. <laughs> by the way. Anyhow, um, uh, my folks um, finally gave up because I started buying Elvis's records. Yeah. The, the 45 and the extended play, you know, that had two songs on the yeah. side? Um, and I started buying those things and playing them all the time. And the folks finally figured out that it was a lost cause. I you know, you I was gone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and they accepted it. They, I reminded them that when they were my age, Frank Sinatra was was taboo in many people's minds. He was the Elvis of, of their generation, yeah. sort of. Um, and they they took that to heart and figured, well, you can't hurt him too badly. You know, John will never be around. That yeah. that kind of person. <laughs> Little did they know. But uh, I think they figured out also after they had read some things about Elvis, how he was raised, where he came from, mm. that he was probably a pretty good boy. Yeah. You know, he was raised by a hardworking Southern family that struggled to make ends meet, which my family did not have to do. Mm. Um, so we were very different that way. Um, and as I was telling you, the way, I, the way I grew up as a kid, I had everything I needed and quite a lot of the things I wanted. Yeah. Where Elvis didn't. Um, I had kids in the neighborhood I could play with any time. We could go play ball or ride bikes or whatever and had a great time. Yeah. And Elvis didn't have that luxury. You know, he, yeah. he might have had one or two childhood friends that they might have thrown rocks across the river or something, but that'd be about it. Yep. You know, he didn't have the, the beauty of growing up the way that I was allowed to grow up. Yeah. When, when Elvis was just first starting out, mm -hmm. he came to your hometown. Yeah, he did. Um, Tell us about, because you, you gave him what was probably his first ever music lesson. <laughs> I think I did. Uh, when I saw Elvis on, on TV and I would hear the radio records, what really bothered me the mostly was I saw him playing a guitar, a Martin, this is a brand name, but that's okay. Yep. Martin D18, <laughs> which everybody who was a guitar player wanted to have one of those, that's top of the line acoustic guitar. And all he was doing was beating on this thing. I thought, that's a terrible way to treat a, a, a class guitar like that, you know. Um, and he, uh, uh, I wanted to play so badly, and, and watching him, I thought, there's got to be more to it. But now keep in mind, Lee, I started playing guitar when I was five years old, and six string, or five string bluegrass banjo when I was six. Yeah. So I knew a little something about guitar by that time. I knew all the chords. Yeah. And Elvis came to my hometown, and at that time he was second build to an old country singer named Hank Snow. Mm -hmm. Now you, you probably know the name. Yeah. Um, many of our friends who'll be watching this probably won't know that name, but he was a very famous old time country singer. And it dawned on me when I saw Elvis on TV beating this beautiful guitar that it hurt my feelings. Not, <laughs> not that he couldn't play, but that he was treating that guitar that way. And I was bound determinedly, I told my folks, I said, one day I'm gonna tell that boy, I'm gonna show him, uh, I'm gonna tell him he can't play guitar. I'm gonna tell him that. My folks are going, oh yeah, sure, right. Well, he came to hometown, I heard on the radio that they were gonna be at the Shrine Mosque, which at that time was the only performance venue in Springfield of any size. So, and I knew they were gonna be rehearsing in the afternoon before the show, do sound checks and what have you. So um, I got I got it in my mind that I'd go down there and, and I'd just tell the boy, you know. I got on my bicycle and I rode all the way from my, my mom and dad's house, all the way downtown to the old Shrine Mosque, parked my bike behind the Shrine Mosque and went up the outside stairs and upstairs on the second floor were the dressing rooms. Seemed like a likely place to find him. There was music going on downstairs on the stage I could hear, but that was a sound check for Hank. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I'm looking around, I'm looking in doors on the left and on the right, trying to find this guy. Can't find him. Last dressing room on the left. I look in and there he is. All kicked back in his chair with his feet up on the dressing room table and he's got some cold drinks over here and some sandwiches over here. And I knock on the door as a polite little boy would. I said, you're Elvis Presley. And he said, I know, but not mean. Yeah. Well, he said it and I thought, oh man, 
uh, this is what I'm going to face. Huh? <laughs> and uh, then he stood up. He said, I said, I'm John Wilkinson. He reached his hand out and shook. He said, come on in, John. Have a seat. I thought that was pretty nice. So I did. I sat down. And he, he wasn't at all what I expected. I expected this leather-clad, turned-up collar, motorcycle hood yeah. kind of thing, which is what everybody thought he was. And come to find out, he was nothing like that at all. He was polite and nice, treated me as a as a real person. Asked about my family, where did I go to school, um, and then finally, why was I here? And I finally, I said, that was the real reason I'm here. I have to tell you, is as I have to tell you, son, you can't play guitar worth a damn. Those were my words. And I know this is a family show, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie to these people. <laughs> So I told him, and he said, "Oh, you think I can? You think you can play guitar better than me?" I said, "Absolutely." And there, over against the wall in this dressing room, was an old beat-up Gibson J45, beautiful guitar. I asked John Lennon if he was alive; he would tell you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I said, "Do you mind if I borrow your guitar for a minute, Elvis?" He said, "No, go ahead." And he's grinning all this time. He thinks, "Here's this nine-year-old kid, and you know, he's going to show me how to play guitar, and I've been on TV, <laughs> you know." So. I said, stand by, I'll get that. And I grabbed the guitar and I whipped out a set of finger picks I always carried with me. And I strapped that guitar on and I ripped down some bluegrass, some uh, uh, little Foggy Mountain Breakdown on the guitar, which is usually a banjo song. Mm -hmm. And then I sang him a couple of songs. And when I finished, he said, you're pretty good. And I said, I know. <laughs> That's getting even for the, yeah. the greeting I got from him. And pretty soon I heard uh, what sounded like two or three people running down the hall. And it was two of the biggest guys I ever saw in my life. I, to this day, I don't know who they are. Yeah. But obviously, they were bodyguards or aides of his. And uh, they looked in there and said, Who are you? What are you doing here? You know, get out of here, kid. You can't be here. And they're saying, Elvis, you got to do a sound check. You can't be messing around like this. And he, uh, he, he stood up and he said, Just a minute. Just a minute. He said, This boy's name is John Wilkinson. He's a friend of mine. He just gave me a guitar lesson. <laughs> and they, they, he remembered that to the day... He died. Yeah. He mentioned it several times, as a matter of fact. Um, so, how soon after that did you decide to get into folk music as a, as a Well, I, al I already was pretty much in the folk thing because the Kingston Trio and and the Weavers and all these were famous folk groups, yeah. and Journeyman, uh, Kinsman, and all that were out. And I had started copying their styles and singing their songs. Yep. And, um, I was real comfortable with folk music because I liked the lyric and I liked the, the melody content. Mm -hmm. So I, I started doing that professionally when I was 13, actually. Okay. My first professional job was when I was 13. I was picking in my hometown. Made a whole $25. <laughs> hey, man, I'm big time then. And, um, but all that time I remembered, I remembered meeting Elvis. Yeah. And I also remember as I left, I got to tell you this because it, it leads into how we met again, uh, as, as these guys were telling me to leave, and Elvis was saying, it's all right, John. I said, no, I know you got things to do, so I said, I'll leave. And before I got to the door, he said, Johnny? And I turned around and said, yeah. He said, come here a minute. And he, got, and he gave me a big hug, and he said, John, I just know we're gonna meet again. I can feel it down in the deepest part of my soul. I just know we're gonna meet again. So 